Is my mic working? Is it working? Is it on? Is it on? I think it's on. Yeah, I think it's on. <coughs> Woo! Hello. We're back at it again. Hope y'all like the sound of, um, of rain. I do. <laughs> um, I mean, it's raining outside for me right now, so, yeah. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am lacking energy, but it is not something you can hear because I am faking that I have energy. Yay! <laughs> Don't worry, it's not from being sick or anything. I am over that. I am done with being sick. I do not have a lot of energy because I have been um, uh, in this, this um, workshop place, like a sewing workshop place for like activating uh, young people or well, like young people between like 18 and 35 I think. Um, who are trying to get back on their feet and into school again. Um, so it's a way for me to like get used to getting up early and being around other people, but not too many. Um, so yeah. And I learned how to crochet. That was fun. Spent four hours crocheting. That was actually really fun. Yeah. That's, that's been my day today. <laughs> I have not had a single bite of food to eat for more than 24 hours. So. But, you know, when you're broke, when your entire family's broke and you're the only vegetarian, that means there's not really a lot of, you know, vegetarian stuff stuff in the house. More like meat stuff and all that. I mean obviously there's pasta and everything but I don't want to eat that all the time. You know? So I'm just starving. But that's fine. <laughs> uh, mom's break baking bread right now so it's fine. But yeah, we're back again. I am going to try and stream every single day again. Um, yeah. I'm still figuring out what to do for Pride. Um, like I'm, I'm getting money in a week. So I'm obviously gonna buy some flags. Some more flags for my collection. Um, maybe I'll show those in the stream. I don't know. I still have yet to ask people if they would like to, like, participate in sharing their stories on stream while I draw. Ooh, and I need to draw something pride-related as well. That would be fun. That would be really fun, actually. Sorry for talking so much. I have this like, I don't start reading before 10 minutes into the stream. It's just something I do. I don't know why. But I have water today. Do not worry, I got water today. We are going to have you hydrating today. <laughs> um, so yeah, and don't be shy. You know, chat with each other and chat conversations with each other in chat and all for your thing. Ask me questions, ask each other questions. Don't be shy. I know it's one thing to say, don't be shy, just do it. And another thing to actually do it, because I'm a lurker when it comes to watching other people stream. I'm very much a lurker and I don't know what to do in chat. So, I, I completely understand that as well. But, don't 
be frightened by me. I'm not a person to be frightened of. In fact, I'm probably more frightened of you than you are of me. You know, with the whole spider thing as well. It's more scared of us than we are of that bitch. I'm the same with the wolves and stuff. I still love that I have a picture of my dog as the starting soon scene. I honestly love that. Like, she's just trying her best, okay? <laughs> and I was happy. But she's just trying her best. <laughs> but yeah, but we are reading today as well. That scene. I really need to see if I can get, like, transitions. Oh, yeah. I have this picture instead of my face cam so that you won't have to look. That's usually where my face cam is. So you get this picture instead. Isn't it adorable? <laughs> and this picture is the cover of the book we're reading for those of you who aren't new here. This is the cover of the book we're reading. It is the seventh book in the series Wings of Fire and it is called Winter Turning. And the dragon we see here, his name is Winter. And it is from his point of view the book is written in. This book. It's a different dragon for each book. And I honestly love the way that is. I love... I love that. I love the way Sutherland's approached this series. But yeah. And also I actually have this dragon statuette. It's not very big. But I have it and I love it so very much. Like I'm I am the mother of dragons. I just need a lot more dragon stuff, okay? I like dragons. <laughs> but yeah. We are reading five more chapters of Winter Turning today. So let's see what will happen here. Yeah. Chapter six. Moons, Glory muttered, staring over Winter's shoulder at the corpse. Clouds of dark red were gathered were gathering along her wings and spine. This is bad winter. Bad for your sister. Bad for the peace of the rainforest. The night wings are going to set their heads on fire, quickly agreed. Oh no wait. They're going to set the closest ice wings head on fire. Winter, I hope your skull is as thick as it looks. Winter didn't want to ask. He really believed that reading another dragon's mind was wrong. But if it meant stopping Icicle before she did something like this again, and finding her before a vengeful troop of Nightwings did, he gazed at Moon until she looked up and met his eyes. He tilted his chin questioningly, and she shook her head. She couldn't hear Icicle's mind at nearby. If Icicle sees you for, she'll know you're here to stop her, Glory said. She gave Moon a worried look, a, a worried glance. Let's get you somewhere safe. And you, Moon pointed out. The Queen snorted, as though she was pretty sure she could handle anything, and led the way back to the Royal Pavilion. What happened? King Kadru yelped as soon as she saw them. She leaped up, her scales shifting into spirals of orange and lavender. Did you find her? Uh-oh, Winter looks mad. Well, actually, that's how he always looks. Is he mad? What happened? Deathbringer was there too, stamping around, making the platform shake and accidentally ripping flowers off the vines. By yourself, he roared at Glory. What three little dragon nuts to protect you? Excuse you, Winter objected. Dragons my age are seasoned warriors where I come from. We guard the queen all the time in the Ice Kingdom. 
Don't get your tail in a knot, Glory said to Deathbringer. Her sloth was already clambering up her tail onto her back again. My top secret and invisible guard was following us too, and you know it. But I wasn't, he protested. She gave him an exasperated look. You can't always be, she said in a low, surprisingly affectionate voice that suddenly made Winter de rethink everything he had assumed about the Queen and her bodyguard. So calm down and trust me to take care of myself. Says the dragon who got herself chained up in a lava prison, Deathbringer muttered. The important thing is that we know the Ice Wing is here, Glory said. She is! King Kajil squeaked. Actually here? In the rainforest? Right this minute? Right this minute, Winter thought. She's close by. Sorry, there's something on my hand. <laughs> His perfect, overachieving sister was somewhere in this damp mud hole, hiding from wing rain wings and planning a murder. How far would she be willing to go? If Winter tried to stop her, would she kill one brother in order to save the other? Don't leave out, leave out the key adjective in there. Kill one low rank disappointing brother in order to save the long lost hero with a bright future. That makes the equation a bit easier. Glory's tail lashed back and forth as she began issuing orders. We need to organize teams to search, starting here and spreading outward. I also need you to come look at something for me. She brushed, she brushed Deathbringer's tail lightly with her own. To identify the body, Winter guessed, before she tells the other Nightwings what we found, so she can tell them who's dead. As for you all, Glory said, turning to Winter and Moon and Quibbly. I think the safest place is the Dragonhead Wingery. It's not far. It's already well fortified, and I'll double the guard to protect you. What? Winter cried, flaring his wings. You can't lock us up with a bunch of new hatched Dragonettes. I need to look for my sister. Glory shook her head. I'm sorry, Winter, but if anything happens to you, the Ice Wings will declare war on us, and I wouldn't blame them. Keeping you safe is the most important thing. She hesitated. I promise to let you speak with her when we find her. Unless an overzealous Nightwing kills her first, Winter shouted. He lashed his tail furiously. You can't promise me you'll keep her alive. I know how Nightwings are. They'll kill her the moment they see her. I am their queen, Glory said with steely ferocity, and I will not let them do that. She's my sister, Winter roared. Exactly, Glory snapped back. So you're in danger from her and the, from the entire tribe of Nightwings once they found out what she did. I'm not having any more dead dragons in my rainforest today. Warm Claws stepped down hard on Winter's back foot. He whirled around, snarling. Stop arguing with her, Quibbly whispered through his teeth. She's not going to give in, Kikaji agreed. Behind her, Moon nodded, adding the weight of a mind reader to that of opinion. Glory was already turning back to Deathbringer and a pair of scout captains. Winter shoved Quibbly back. He was not done fighting about this. There was no way he was going to sit quietly with a bunch of baby dragons while an enemy tribe 
chase down his sister. Listen, Quibbly hissed, shoving him back. If you keep arguing, she'll add more go even more gods. Just agree, and then we'll sneak off. It's the only way. King Cadio's eyes went wide, and her scales turned an odd shade of yellowish green. But Moon was nodding again. We'll figure it out. She agreed in a whisper. We'll make sure you're the first one to find your sister. Also, just say if the rain is, like, too loud. Okay. You just tell me if the rain is too loud or you actually can't hear me. <laughs> Winter ground his teeth together. He'd spent a lifetime being told what to do, but that was by other ice wings. No rain wing could order him around, and he didn't have to listen to whispered advice from a sand wing either. Mother and father would want him to fight right now. He was sure of it. They'd wreck this pavilion and fight the entire tribe, both tribes, if anyone tried to stop them from hurting Icicle, from hunting Icicle. But if he fought everyone now, Glory would see him as a threat, just like Icicle. Whereas if he waited and snuck off to search for her, as Quibbly suggested, it was horrible. Winter could almost see his, his ranking plummeting. Everything he'd worked, everything he'd ever worked for, vanishing as he bowed his head to obey, to obey a rainbow bright dragonette, queen of the night wings. It'll be worth it if I come back with a hailstorm, he told himself fiercely. Even if I'm the bottom ranked ice wing for the rest of my life, Saving Hailstorm would make all of this worthwhile. And so he agreed. He nearly changed his mind when he saw the rainforest wingery though. It was even worse than he feared. Exactly the sort of soft, cuddly, lazy, stupid setup he should have expected from a bunch of rain wings. They didn't care if their Dargonets grew up to be feeble and unthreatening, so of course they let them roll around like mammal cups instead of launching their training the moment they hatched. The main play area was an enormous trampoline made of springy vines and leaves, strung between several high trees, several trees high above the ground. It was surrounded on all sides by tall, soft, woven mats of branches that kept the baby dragons from falling over the edge. Six full-grown dragons guarded the perimeter, three night wings and three rain wings, all of whom looked more alert and tense than anyone else Winter had ever seen so far. Winter had seen so far. One of the night wings inspected each of them carefully before allowing them inside. She poked their small skyfire bags, sniffed the rocks, studied Winter's snout with a worried expression, and spent a full minute examining Quibbly's deadly tail barb. It's very safe, Quibbly promised her. Sandwing dragonets learn early how to avoid accidentally stabbing anyone. He coiled his tail protectively inward and the guard jumped back. I don't like it, she said to Heliconia, the rainwing who escorted them to their wingery. Was supposed to keep complete strangers away from the dragonets, and this one looks the mildest word I can think of is hostile. She frowned at Winter. That's just his face, said Quibbly, and his personality. He would never harm a dragonette, Moon promised. I can speak for myself, Winter snapped. Rumbling under her breath, the Nightwing finally let them pass. They flew up and over the woven wall, landing lightly on the platforms around the trampoline inside. Winter scanned the space and saw that it was full of peculiar toys that didn't appear to teach anything or impart any valuable skills whatsoever. Inside the wingery, 
were nine dragonets less than a year old. At first glance, Winter thought they were all Nightwings because they all had black scales and were wrestling in a pile together. But when the newcomers landed on the platforms around them, nine tiny heads popped up and seven of them became suddenly vibrantly pink and yellow. Pretty new dragons! One of them cheered, and eight dragonets came rampaging over, staggering on the balancey surface and flapping their unwieldy wings. Winter backed up all the way until his wings hit the wall, but that didn't stop three tiny rain wings from closing in on him. <laughs> Glittery! yelled one. I can do that! said another. Look, look, look! He crouched, concentrating, and a wave of icy blue surged across his scales. A moment later, he looked like a miniature version of Winter, without the extra ice dragon spikes and horns. He held out his claws and cooed admiringly at himself. <gasps> nice work, King Kaju said. She squinted at Winter as though she were as though he were an ice sculpture that needed improving. You could add a little more dark blue shading around the spines and edges of the wings. <gasps> sure, said the dragonette. The dragonette clicked his teeth together thoughtfully, and a moment later a subtle shift went through some of the scales, making the jagged ridges ridge along his back look taller and sharper, a little more like an ice wings. <gasps> Try this one, called the dragonette, who was circling around quickly. The sandwing wrinkled his nose at her, and she wrinkled hers right back. Her scales were already shifting to the same pale yellow as his. She spread her wings and studied the underside of them, then reached out and poked quickly, and poked quickly until he opened his wings for her to examine. Hmm, she said. A shimmer of gold and bronze appeared on her chest and then slowly melted into a color that almost exactly matched Quibbly's underscales. Woo! She cried, let's see if I can do a snout! Winter watched tiny brown freckles and a small dark zigzag that matched Quibbly's scar appear on her scales. He tried to squash his, ama to squash his amazement. Dragonets less than a year old could do that? Winter glanced around the wingery. Maybe they weren't completely wasting their time in here after all. Of course, camouflage scales weren't as impressive or useful as hunting and fighting and survival skills. Hailstorm had battled a killer whale before he was one year old. Winter had been sent out to spend an entire night in a blizzard alone. Icicle was already combat training with dragons three times her size by her first birthday. These dragonets wouldn't last a minute in ice wing training. They wouldn't make a dent in the rankings at all. His gaze fell on the one dragonet who was hanging back. A small, nervous-looking nightwing with a leaf bandage wrapped around one foreleg. The dragonet met his eyes, squawked nervous, squeaked nervously, and tucked his head under his wings. Don't mind him, said the dragonet, who turned himself the color of winter. He's so useless, said the other nightwing dragonet. She was sleek and glossy, like a steel, like a seal, and was studying the newcomers with more reverse, with more reserve than the wild curiosity of the rainwings. He's still having nightmares about the volcano every night. Even though that was a month ago. Toughen up, lizard. She barked at him. The bandaged night wing slowly drew his head out and folded his wings back, shivering from horns to tail. Winter could see him fighting back his terror as he squared his shoulders and faced the new dragons. Some night wing he is, the female dragonette snorted. We keep telling him what an important, dangerous tribe we are, but frankly, I'm not sure he'll ever measure up. I guess some dragons are just... Hatched in the wrong tribe. Moon finished softly. 
Winter tilted his head at her. Did she wish she weren't a Nightwing? Or had she heard other dragons wishing they could be something different? Not me. He couldn't imagine not being an Icewing. His whole life was about trying to be a true Icewing warrior. All he'd ever wanted was to rise to the top of the rankings and prove himself to his parents and the rest of the tribe. That was all he should want. Until I met her, and now I want... What? To understand a Nightwing? To have her care about me? It's alright, Scoot, Quibbly said suddenly, flapping his wings at the dragonets. Oh. Nope. That's not what he said at all. He said, All right, Scoot, Quibbly said suddenly, flapping his wings at the dragonets. Leave us alone and go play quietly over there. He herded the dragonets to the other side of the enclosure and came back, ducking his head toward Moon. Are you alright? he whispered. Winter realized Moon was rubbing her temples. He'd forgotten that she must be hearing the thoughts of all the dragons around her. While the baby dragons were bombarding the newcomers with words, they must also be blasting the inside of Moon's head with their thoughts. I'm fine. I just need to readjust. I just need to adjust, Moon said, dropping her claws and shaking out her wings. We can't sneak away yet. The gods are too focused on us. She glanced at Winter. I'll keep listening. Her talons went back to her head, and she closed her eyes. Guess what? King Kaji said, lightly bouncing on vines below her. Lightly bouncing the vines below her. Her claws had all turned dark green to match the wingery, so it almost looked as though she had no feet at all if you didn't look closely. I think I figured it out. I was thinking about Moon's prophecy while you were off chasing Icicle. The stalker of dreams. That must be Ice. That, that must be Scarlet. Using a dream visitor to bother people. Right? Sorry, my younger brother just came in. <laughs> I think I'll turn down the volume a bit. There. Maybe, Quibbly said, although there's something a little ominous about darkness and stalker so close to each other in the prophecy. What if there's a connection to that dark stalker you mentioned, Winter? <laughs> Winter scoffed. He's been dead for centuries. If the prophecy is about him, it's a little out of date. Was it his imagination? Or did Moon just press her eyes closed even harder? Everybody shush! King Kaju ordered. I'm telling you something. So I thought if Scarlet is the stalker of, stalker of dreams, maybe the talents of power and fire is that freaky Skywing everyone's afraid of. What's her name again? Peril. The winter growled. Of course it could be Peril. The dragon who could burn all the dragons to death just by touching them. She'd stared at him with her creepy, fiery blue eyes, standing there in the entrance hall of Jade Mountain, as though she could go any she could go wherever she pleased. After everything she had done and everyone she'd killed, free and unpunished, it wasn't right. I could believe it. She's murder waiting to happen. Quickly shook his head. But she saved Clay's life. I was there. I saw it. I don't think she's working with Scarlet anymore. Then you're an even bigger fool than you look, Winter snapped. Hey, hey, quit being mean, King Kaju said. 
Maybe that's what one who is not what she seems is about. Maybe Peril seems like she's changed, but actually she's totally going to betray the Dragonettes and scorch the Earth and kill everyone and all of the other bad things at once. She paused. Suddenly I'm not enjoying this conversation as much as I thought I would. Did you see anything in Peril's mind? Quibbly asked Moon, nudging her gently. Was she planning anything terrible? Peril's mind it is almost impossible to read, Moon said, opening her eyes. It's all fire in there, like she's burning from the inside too. I think... I think she's not a happy dragon. But I'm not sure she's evil. I don't really know though. I mean, no one is completely evil. What are you talking about? Winter demanded. Plenty of dragons are completely evil. Not when you see what's going on inside them. Moon shook her head fiercely. Dragons are complicated. Some are kinder than others. She looked up quickly, then quickly away. Are braver than others? Here she glanced mysteriously at Winter, and he shivered. And some of them do really cool things, but everyone has both good thoughts and bad thoughts, and reasons for what they do, reasons they believe are important. I don't have bad thoughts, do I? Kinkachu asked Moon. Moon laughed. True, not that I ever heard, she admitted. I'd better have them all now. Quick while I can, Kinkachi said, touching her skyfire pouch with a grin. Winter puzzled over Moon's words for a moment. He would have assumed that hearing other dragons' thoughts would confirm that most of them were evil, or at least halfway there. How could Moon be immersed in others' mind, in other minds all day, and still believing the goodness of dragons? She hasn't met very many dra other dragons. It sold herself, growing up in the rainforest, hidden away. But she met the whole Nightwing tribe which surely was full of evil, and Peril, and Sora, the dragon who tried to kill Winter's sister, and Moon had met Icicle. Do you think Icicle's evil? He blurted. I mean, I don't, but... No, Moon said. And that's what I mean. She's doing what she thinks she has to do to save her brother. I wouldn't make the choices she's made, and she needs to be stopped. But I think I understand them. It is very cold and intense inside her head. I guess I think it would be hard growing up like she did, always knowing your parents are expecting, um, expecting big things of you. She trailed off, giving Winter a sideways glance. She knows what my parents want from Icicle. Winter realized with a jolt. She knows Icicle is supposed to grow up to challenge Green Glacier, but she's keeping that secret, perhaps just to show me that she can keep secrets. Don't trust her, he reminded himself. Nightwing's a manipulative. She's probably just saying what I want to hear. Moon shifted her wings, turning to look at the playing dragonettes, and a fan of sunshine brushed across her scales. They're not just black. Winter thought. The more of a dark purple with shades of dark blue and green mixed in. Back to the prophecy, he said irritably, trying to focus. So perhaps Scarlet and Peril are conspiring. Maybe they're planning to take down Jade Mountain together. What does the old Nightwing home have to do with that? Well, we should go there and see, King Kaju said. It's not far from here. Maybe there's something there we can use to stop them, Quibbly suggested. The third dream visitor, Moon said suddenly. She sat up and flicked her tail over her talons. Starlight said it was lost when the volcano exploded. Maybe we can find it. 
Then we wouldn't need to hunt for Icicle, Quibbly said, turning to Winder. We could contact Scarlet your you could contact Scarlet yourself and ask about Hailstorm. I can't, Winter said. I've never seen Queen Scarlet. Icicle was part of the delegation that went to negotiate for Hailstorm's release. Unsuccessfully, obviously. So they met, and that's why Scarlet can get into her dreams. But I couldn't do it, even if I had the dream visitor. And there was a pause. Quickly tapped his claws together softly, thoughtfully. I might be able to, he said. I saw her once, from far away, but I think I could dream visit her. So let's go, King Kajiwa whispered. Moon, how about now? Moon tipped her head sideways, then nodded. I think they're calming down, she said. But the little ones are still very interested in us. They'll put a huge fuss if we try to leave. Oh, I have a plan for that, King Kaju said confidentially. Not confidentially, confidently. Watch, it'll be hilarious. She fluffed out her wings, turned herself an iridescent blue like a butter what like a dragonfly, and sauntered over to where the dragons the baby dragons were arguing in loud whispers about why Winter and Quibbly had such weird tales. Hey! King Kaju said to them. Want to play a game? Yes! They all shrieked in chorus. It's basically hide and seek, King Kaju said. You know, when you're trying to find the camouflage dragons, the four of us have a bet that we can hide better than the others. Even though I'm clearly going to win because I'm the only ringling. She lifted her talons and dramatically changed them red. Ooh! Went all the dragonettes. So, you all close your eyes and we'll hide. And whoever finds one of us first wins, said King Kaju. Alright? Make sure you count to a thousand so we have enough time. squealed one of the rain wings, covering her eyes. One, two, three, six, seventeen! The others all covered their eyes as well and began shouting random numbers along with her. Whoops, King Kaju said, galloping back to Moon. I forgot about how much rain wings can't count. We better move fast. Which way? Quibbly asked Moon. Where are the gods? Moon closed her eyes and pointed at six spots around the circumference around the circumference of the trampoline walls. And two of them are also watching the sky to make sure we don't fly out, she added, opening her eyes again. So we can we go down, Winter said. Over here. He crossed a corner with more shadows than the others where a few curiously shaped branches and large seed pots were piled, as if for playing with. He moved them aside and touched the place where the wall met the vo woven vines. If we, make a, if we make a hole here, they might not notice for a few minutes, long enough for us to get away. I can burn a hole, Quibbly offered, small flames squirting from his nose. Away, King Kaju said, batting at his snout. No fire in my forest, thank you. This will be safer. This will be safer, Winter said. He crouched, clenched his jaw, and summoned. Damn, sorry, I actually only read ahead. Again, I'm sorry, I do that a lot. And summoned the cold from deep inside him. It hissed into his throat like a building snowstorm. Finally, he opened his mouth and shot a shimmering blast of frost breath at the webs of leaves and branches. He froze a spot just large enough for a dragon to crawl, crawl through, a small icy circle of silver vegetation. Six hundred! One of the dragonettes bellowed suddenly, leaping ahead a few hundred. The other gleefully joined in. Six hundred and nine! Six hundred and forty-two! 
quick, Moon whispered. Winter leaned forward and rapped sharply on the ice with his front claws. The circle cracked and then shattered into tiny frozen splinters, leaving a jacked hole at the base of the wall. What was that? What was that? One of the Nightwing Dragonets asked, but he was drowned out by the others shouting. 698? 805? 805? <laughs> go, go, go! Kinkaji whispered frantically. Winter dove through the hole first, catching his wings on a few remaining shards of ice. Moon was right behind him as he shot toward the ground and plunged into a thicket of enormous leaves. A moment later, Quibbly and Kinkaji landed beside them with, with soft thoughts. Kinkaji's scales immediately shifted and she vanished like a snowball thrown back into the snow. Moon was still as an iceberg beside Winter, her wings folded to hide her silver scales that sparkled underneath, her eyes closed and brow furrowed. He leaned closer to whisper into her ear. Did anyone see us? She shook her head. But I can't imagine those dragonets are going to believe we're somehow hiding in there for very long. <laughs> You'd be surprised, King Kaji said. Hide and seek is our favorite game in kind of an obsessive way. They'll search every square inch of the wingery before giving up. I pulled a few things over to, leave, to hide the hole. So, with luck, we'll have a few minutes at least. This way, Moon said, slipping off into the trees. Winter tried to stay low and in the shadows as he hurried after her. He spotted a flicker of black wings overhead as one of the guards circled around their wingery, but no one raised an alarm yet. How am I going to find Icicle? He whispered to her, before anyone else does. She hesitated, giving him a worried sideways look. I don't know how much you want to hear about what I can do, she whispered back. I've never had anyone talk to about it before, except, well, no one really. But I don't want to freak you out. It is disturbing, he admitted. But tell me anyway, if it's about Icicle. I can't sense her anywhere, Moon shook her head. I've been listening as hard as I can since we got to the rainforest, but there's no sign of her. Maybe she left already, Winter said. Maybe she figured out where Scarlet is and went to confront her. He checked behind him and saw only creepy battling the vines and mud. Think Kaiju was there, it was impossible to tell. What he wouldn't give for camouflage scales. Then he could slip through the trees without glory or any gods spotting him. He could find Icicle and get her away from here before anything terrible happened. Anything else terrible, that is. Are you really wishing you were raining right now? He scolded himself. I think mother and father love to hear about that. Wow, this is a long chapter, by the way. Oh, it's almost over. <laughs> As I say that, it's almost over. Now was the time to ditch these dragons, before his thoughts got any more entangled. He could fall behind quickly, wait until no one was paying attention, and then take off. Now that he had the sky fire, Moon wouldn't be able to find him by his thoughts. He'd hunt down Icicle and they'd go get Hailstorm together. Or, if he couldn't find her, he'd go back to the Ice Kingdom on his own, like he'd originally planned. He paused for half a step, letting Moon slip ahead of him. Another minute, and then... Moon suddenly froze, digging her talons into the ground. Instinctively, Winter and quickly froze, too. Search party coming this way, she whispered. We have to hide. She turned and pushed Winter toward a nearby fallen tree, covered with moss and winding yellow flower vines. Under here, 
can you fit? I'd rather fight them, Winter objected. But they'll think you're an icicle and lock you up, King Kaju's voice said from the air. Unless I kill you first, Quibbly said, which I realize I should be more enthusiastic about, but so for some reason I'm not. Come on! He tucked on one of Winter's wings, then dove under the tree himself, rolling into a ball in the shadows. Winter reluctantly followed, crouching until his underbelly was sliding across the wet leaves. Dangling curls of damp moss caught on his horns, and something scuttled down his spine as he wedged himself in next quickly to warm scales. Oh, why are you so glittery? King Kaju fretted from outside the hiding hole. Nothing natural is that color. It's all right, Moon whispered back. Just try to cover us and stay as still as you can. I'll have you know I was a hide and seek champion. King Kaju started. No one! Shh! Moon said. And a moment later, Winter was startled to feel her was startled to feel her sliding in between him. The silver scales by her eyes caught the light for a moment as she turned her head, listening. He could feel the whole length of her body breathing softly, anxiously. That's better, King Kaji whispered. I can't see him anymore. Winter covered the skyfire pouch with one of his talons and tried to breathe. Maybe this was what Moon had meant when she said reading his mind was confusing. He couldn't even tell what he was feeling. Furious, trapped, frustrated, grateful, safe, alone, protected, on fire, wanting the, to, bleh, wanting the wrong things, hating himself. Confused, confused, confused. His mind flashed back to the first time he'd done a ranking test out in the storm with Hailstorm and Icicle. They'd lost him as soon as they could each striking out on their own. It made sense, even to a one-year-old dragonette struggling through a blizzard. Nobody wanted to risk letting someone else strike down their ranking number. So what if these, so what were these dragons doing? Why were they risking the wrath of their queens by helping him? Moon's scales rippled as she shifted quietly. Was that her heartbeat he could feel? Thundering in the places where their wings were pressed together? Or was that his own? He closed his eyes and tried to stop thinking. A few eternities passed, and then finally Moon whispered, They're gone. Then get out of the way and let me out, Winter said in a strangled voice that came out more harshly than he'd meant to. Than he'd meant it to. She rolled instantly away, and he wriggled after her until he stood blinking in the green rainforest light again. Quickly emerged, stretching out his wings and shaking his tail. Careful with that thing! Winter snapped, glaring at the poisonous barb as it swung back and forth. If you ever get stabbed by my tail, I promise it won't be by accident, Quickly said haughtily. Moon, wait up! She was already moving away toward the sound of a waterfall in the distance, and the sandwing hurried after her. I could leave now. Oh, sorry. I could leave now, Winter thought, feeling as though his talons were paralyzed with indecision. I should leave now. That would be the smart icewing thing to do. The words you're looking for are thank you, King Kaji said, materializing suddenly beside him. Winter jumped. Thank you, Moon, for for warning me and hiding me and helping me even though I am an enormous super jerk sometimes. She flounced off into the trees. Her orange scales faded back into the green of the leaves. Winter hesitated, and then followed her. They're still useful to me, he thought. I have a better chance of finding Icicle if I stay with them. But just for now. Soon, he promised himself. 
I'll leave soon. End of chapter six. Holy carp, that was a long chapter. Like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna count how many pages that were. Well, Thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-two and a bit. That is twice as, that's basically two chapters in one. Damn. Okay. That was a long chapter, I will admit that. I'll check how many pages the next chapter is on, okay? A little bit. Okay, it is much shorter. It's like 10 pages shorter, don't worry. <laughs> but I gotta hydrate a bit, and so do you. You gotta hydrate. We've been live for almost an hour, damn. I mean, I have been reading slower, like more narrative way, I guess. So, I mean, that explains it. That explains why it took that long to read, to read it. But yeah, hydrate. I, I, a tiny, tiny hydration break. There's one between each chapter. Also, tell me if I'm not loud enough, okay? Tell me if you can't hear me or anything. You gotta do that, okay? Hydrated. When I become affiliate, when I at some point become affiliate and I get like channel points, um, I'm going to customize them so like uh, you can redeem channel points for hydration, for me to hydrate. So I remember <laughs> all throughout stream. <laughs> Yeah. Winter's got a crush. Winter's got a crush. Winter's got a crush on moon. Winter's got a crush on moon. Winter's in love. And he's denying it. Don't deny yourself, Winter. Feel the love. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Chapter 7. When winter caught up to the others, they were gathered at the base of a huge tree beside a waterfall, staring up at a hole in a trunk. And there was something immediately and indefinitely uncomfortable about this place. It was like a spot of thin ice on a frozen lake, where the cool safety of the upper world came too close, came too close to the dark depths below. The tunnel to the Nightwing Island, King Kaju said softly. Her voice, her voice was never that quiet or wobbly. Winter squinted at her. Was she afraid of the place for some reason? You can wait here if you want, Moon said, brushing King Kaju's tail with her own. If it's too, too anything. I'm all right, King Kaju said. She flared the ruff between her eye, behind her ears and deliberately turned to cheek, her scales dark blue. I just haven't been back since the whole thing. Whoa, Quibbly said, making the connection before Winter did. I didn't realize you were you one of the rings they present and experimented on when finished for him. It wasn't quite as horrible as it sounds, King Kaji said. Only mostly that horrible. Winter had to take a deep breath and poke the feelings he was having to be sure he was having it. 
The speck fucking catch you? Surprised that a dragon as silly as her could have survived what the night wings did to the rain wings? He'd only heard the rumors, really, and the stories that had spread after the war ended. Tales of night wings abducting harmless rain wings, dragging them back to the volcanic island, chaining them up, and forcing them to use their venom so the night wings could study it. It sounded unforgivable to him, but King Kaju did not act like a dragon with a grudge. She didn't seem to hate the night wings at all, even though she clearly should. Yet she treated the moon like a best friend. Because moon is different, whispered his treacherous mind. Because she would never do what the other night wings did. But you don't hate them, Queen said. Quibbly said, echoing Winter Winter's thoughts. That's fascinating. Well, they're not my favorite dragons, King Kaju admitted, squirming. Except Moon, of course. And Deathbringer is usually pretty great. But, you know, they're trying to change. They have to, and with Glory as their queen, they won't do any more awful things. We'll see, Winter muttered. Moon flew up to the hole and stepped inside, then twisted to look back at them. Winter, come look at this. Just inside the mouth of the tunnel was a squashed wet leaf shaped a bit like a scavenger's paw. When Winter crouched to sniff it, he felt colder than the tunnel around them. Did you go this way? he asked Moon. I don't know, she said. I still can't hear her, but maybe that's why. If she's at the volcano... Winter started down the tunnel, walking straight into that unsettling, wrong-feeling air. He heard the shuffling wings of the others falling in behind him. Heat crackled along his scales as he glimpsed the end of the tunnel, and he paused. This was worse than the damp rainforest heat. This was the kind of peak where he wouldn't be able to use his frost breath. And there was something blurring his sight. Bits of ash, maybe, drifting through the air. He took a deep breath and stepped out into a cave, his talons sinking instantly into a layer of ash that covered the floor. It was dark and nearly impossible to see. But a faint gray light scraped the walls on either side of him. Windsor took a step forward as Moon emerged behind him and breathed out a small plume of fire. Sharp claws seized Winter's heart. The shape of a huge dragon loomed overhead, its wings outstretched, its talons reaching toward him. He's dead, Moon said quickly. Whoever he is, he's gone. This is just the shape of him left behind. She edged forward and tapped one of the grasping talons. The dragon didn't move. I wonder who he wa who it was. We know who it was. It was Marosia, and we're glad he's dead. But also, Marosia is her dad. She doesn't know it. She only heard his name once in her mother's mind. He never knew. She never never knew him. And I'm glad she never did because he was an awful dragon, and I hated him so much. And I'm glad he's dead. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Winter's breath slowly returned, carefully made his way around the petrified dragon, trying not to touch the statue of hardened ash. There was a tunnel he could just squeeze into. Although it was clogged with ash and the floor was a field of cooled lava, that was still too hot for Winter's liking. It was a relief when he reached open air and was able to spread his wings and fly. This, then, at last, was the secret home of the Nightwings. He circled, studying everything below him, and felt his triumph dimming. The island was smaller than Winter could have imagined. It made him feel instantly claustrophobic, 
even with, or perhaps because of, the vast ocean lurking in all directions, dense black ripples of lava flowed, fl lava flows covered everything he could see, still glowing orange and yellow in places where liquid fire was spilling through the cracks. A mountain cut jaggedly into the sky, the volcano itself. But it looked as if the tub had been smashed in, leaving a smoking hole. Had the air been impossible to breathe before the volcano erupted? Thick and grey clouds, heavy with ash and smoke and sizzling with lightning, stretched across the sky. Everything smelled of sulfur and fire and death. Winter couldn't imagine anyone have it actually living here. What did the Nightwings eat? In a place so empty of life. How could they sleep? With the promise of fiery smoke, death, of smi fiery death smoking and muttering over their heads all the time. Who would raise their dragonettes in such a hideous place? It felt like a whale smacking him in the face. How suddenly and completely he understood Moon's mother and her decision to hide Moon in the rainforest. A stranger question was why the Nightwings hadn't done the same. Why other Nightwings hadn't done the same. Afraid to disobey their queen, probably, he guessed. Icewings followed Queen Glacier's orders with unquestioning disobedience. With unquestioning obedience. As they were handed down through the levels of the aristocracy. It was like obeying your parents. No one would ever think to do otherwise. But Ice Wings had the entire Ice Kingdom, the safest and most purely beautiful place to live in all of Peria. It was the polar opposite of this nightmare. Queen Glacier took care of them. The Nightwing Queen could not have cared about her subjects at all if she kept them kept them rotting in a place like this. Oh! King Kachu gasped. Soaring up beside him with Moon and Quibbly. Look at that fortress! It's totally destroyed! She pointed to the smoking volcano. Winter hadn't even noticed the outline of walls poking through the lava. But now that he looked, he could see the clear shape of the wrecked structure. One of the towers looked eerily like his own flight training tower in Glacier's Palace. I had no idea, Moon said. I mean, I've seen the island in their hands, but I've never felt this. Mother never said, it's so horrible. Holy smoking vipers, Quibbly said. The sand wing swooped down toward the river of molten lava and then back up to winter. If I ever had nightmares, they'd be about this place from now on. This might take care of my nightmares, King Kaju said. Imagine having a home devastated like this. Poor Nightwings. Poor Nightwings, Winter exploded. He could, he would not, would not feel sorry for the Nightwings. Are you serious? What is wrong with you? Don't you remember what they were doing to your tribe? To you? How they plan to steal the rainforest and probably kill you all? King Kachu flinched away from him, covering her eyes. I know, she said in a small voice, but isn't it still sad? They deserve it, Winter spat. After everything they've done, the Nightwings deserve to lose their home like this. How can you say that? Moon asked. How could any tribe deserve this? Seriously, Quibbly said. What they do to the Ice Wings to make you hate them so much? To make you hate them so much. Winter twisted away from them, flying toward the volcano. His training had never covered this. He'd grown up knowing the old stories about Nightwings, and he'd always assumed everybody else did too. They were a part of his bones, and the bones of every Ice Wing. We hate Nightwings. They stole from us. They are all liars and backstabbers and monsters. 
Was it a secret? The story of what they'd done to the Ice Wings so long ago? Or did other tri tribes not know about it because they didn't particularly care? Or because the Night Wings had covered it up over the years, layering their own lies on top of the truth? Was it? That was certainly something they were particularly good at. A blast of sulfurous smoke came from one of the vents below, and he dodged around it, coughing. He'd always imagined the night wings lounging around their secret home in perfect security, feasting and laughing and re reveling in their superiority. He'd imagined, he'd imagined them living among marvels, perhaps deep underground somewhere, smugly enjoying what they'd stolen from the ice wings. Not, not this, not anything like this hellscape. He banked to the left, searching the ground for any sign of ice, sign of icicle. Winter? He turned and found Moon following him. Please tell me, she said. I really don't know what the Nightwings did, and I think... I think I need some to... I think I need to... She flicked her tail anxiously. Does it have something to do with Darkstalker? It does, Winter said, watching Quipley and King Katu flying over to join them. Well, if it was a secret, someone should have told him to keep it that way. The truth was, it was better for everyone to know, so they'd understand never to trust the Nightwings. But it begins with his thrice-cursed mother, Foeslayer. She approached the Ice Wings under the guise of peace to offer us an allegiance against the Sky Wings, and instead she abducted our prince. What, f what for? Quickly asked. Uh, you know, all the Ice Wing princes I've met have been kind of grouchy. Why would someone want one around to want one around enough to steal him? Winter glared at him, because Ar Prince Arctic was our last animus. They all gazed back blankly, as though they completely missed the thunderbolt he'd just thrown at their feet. Our last animus, he growled. Don't you know anything? Not every tribe has animus dragons. Ice wings haven't had any in centuries, and you know why? Because the night wings stole that power from us. That's crazy, Quibbly protested. You can't steal a power like that. You can if it's genetic, Winter said. The night wings never had an animus until they took Prince Arctic. Now they have them, and we don't. He took off, flying in a wide circle around the volcano as he eyed the lava-strewn slopes. He kept hoping to see a flash of white scales, but the only colors on this island were black and red and gold and gray. Wait, Moon said, catching up to him. What are you saying? That Foeslayer and Prince Arctic, they had eggs together? A Nightwing and an Icewing? Sounds twisted, doesn't it? Winter hissed, ignoring the stab of guilt he felt at the thought. Oh, oh! It's not twisted, Winter. You can be with her, please. Oh, this is painful to read. Oh, for Winter. Especially when you realize that Arctic would have never agreed to it, would never have betrayed the royal family that way, unless Foeslayer threatened him with something horrible. But whatever she did, it worked. Moon's wings missed a beat, and she nearly fell out of the sky. Win- Oh, sorry. Winter, she cried. Are you saying Darkstalker's father- was an ice wing? Not just any ice wing, Winter snarled. 
Prince Arctic are our very last animus ever hatched in the Icewing tribe. Father of the Darkstalker, the first Nightwing animus they planted that way. That's complicated and devious, Quibbly said. Congratulations, you've just summed up the Nightwings, Winter said to him. But couldn't Arctic go home after that? King Katya asked. I mean, once they had his ex, couldn't his couldn't the Nightwings let him go? Why didn't he go back to the Ice Wings and have more eggs there? Winter saw Moon falter and realized somehow she knew the answer. Because Darkstalker killed him. Winter said his own son murdered him to make sure the Ice Wings never got their stolen power back. That's not... Moon cried and then checked herself. I, I mean, that's not the reason I heard. Well, it's the truth, Winter said. The volcano rumbled threateningly and spat a small shower of sparks into the air. They were flying over the far side of the island now, and there was still no sign of icicle. But... Quibbly said cautiously. Is it that big of a deal? I mean, I hear Animus jagging some more trouble than they're worth. Don't they go crazy after a while? That's true, Moon said. I read about a sea wing Animus who murdered in almost his entire family. But we knew how to handle them. Winter scoffed. We perfected the use of Animus power. Ice Wings were the first tribe to figure out that too much use can damage the dragon's soul. So we were very careful with our Animus dragons. We bred them into the royal line, watched each potential Animus from hatching, and trained them carefully so they would understand their limits. Each Ice Wing Animus spent years planning his or her one great enchantment. They could use their power just one time. To create something that would benefit the whole tribe. Prince Arctic was only days away from his gifting ceremony ceremony when the Nightwings kidnapped him. Wait, Quigley said, what happens if Anonymous didn't do what he was told? What if he wanted to use his power for something else? Or what if he didn't want to marry whatever princess was chosen for him? I don't understand that question, Winter said. It is obviously an honor to marry into the royal Icewing lineage. But if you take away all of a dragon's choices, Quibbly trailed off. Stop being obtuse, Winter shouted. You are missing the entire point, the point entirely. Prince Arctic was our animus heritage. And everything would be different if the Nightwings hadn't stolen and killed him. I'm just wondering if there's another side to the story, Quibbly suggested, shrugging his wings. No, Winter said. There isn't. What I'm wondering is why we're, you're still so mad about it. King Kajir interjected. It sounds like it happened hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Isn't it time to move on? Who cares about all that ancient history? It's not ancient history to us, Winter growled. We still live with the consequences each and every day. But you can't blame the Nightwings who are alive now. It wasn't their idea. She, uh, oh. Sorry, that wasn't Moon. But you can't blame the Nightwings who are alive now. It wasn't their idea, she argued. It's not like you can get your vengeance on Foeslayer or Darkstalker. Moon dropped suddenly down toward the fortress. Startled and irritated, Winter had to wheel around in midair to follow her. When they caught up, she was sitting in the mouth of a half-caved-in tunnel. 
peering into the darkness. I don't think this is right, she said as they all landed next to her. This isn't the lost city of the night in the prophecy. It isn't? King Kaju said. Why not? There was a city before this one, Moon said. The Nightwings used to live somewhere on the continent, back in Darkstalker's time. But they fled their city after he was... Once he was gone, they came back and they came here to hide from him in case he ever came back. She cast an odd, worried look at Winter. I think that's the city we need to find. The ancient one. The one that's really lost. Oh. King Kachi said. You couldn't have maybe mentioned that a bit sooner. Sorry, Moon said. I was hoping this would work. So, I don't, so we don't have to go look for a dream visitor in there, quickly said, nodding toward the tunnel. Because I am all in favor of not going into the creepy smoking lava filled tunnel. Me too, Moon agreed. Except that I thought I heard maybe. Icicle? Winter demanded. You think she's in there? I'm not sure, Moon said. But at almost the same time, they all heard a strange scrape sound from deep inside the volcano. Oh yeah, King Kaji whispered. No, I'm really wishing we had saved the ancient evil dragon stories somewhere less spooky. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Winter was sure the moment before Moon turned to him with wide eyes. He saw a glint of silver pale scales shimmering toward him as a figure crawled slowly out of the dark tunnel. It was Icicle. They'd found her at last. End of chapter 7. Alright, I'm gonna check how many pages are in the next chapter. five and a bit okay that's a very short chapter that's all right <laughs> but first remember to hydrate people i'm going to hydrate right now so i'm on mute real quick Sorry, I'm back. All right, let's move on to chapter eight. She 
It's not all right, Moon whispered to him. Her mind is all scattered and foggy. I don't know why. A talon of ice trailed down Winter's spine as he watched his sister stagger into the gray light. The arctic blue eyes were bloodshot, crackled with dark blue veins, and the scratches she'd gotten from the fight at Jade Mountain still hadn't healed. She was streaked with mud and blood. Not just her own dark blue blood, but splatters of dark red that must have come from the Nightwing she'd killed. Icicle's scales had always been whiter than everyone else's, her claws sharper, her teeth gleaming, and her spikes pristine even after clubbing a walrus to death. She plunged into, a frigid, into the frigid ocean six times a day because she believed an ice wing who glittered like diamonds was a more menacing, was a more menacing ice wing. In Icicle's view of the world, grubby, dull dragons deserved to be seventh circle. Winter could never have imagined her looking this wretched. She clutched the edge of the tunnel with her front talons, leaning against the rocky wall and glaring at him. Icicle? He said. Are you... Why are you here? She spat. To ruin yet another of my plans. You don't feel satisfied that you've already guaranteed Hailstorm's death. What's wrong with you? King Kaji blurted. You look terrible. Could be worse, Icicle snarled. I could look like you. I want to help find that Hailstorm, Winter said. If he's really still alive. I don't need your help, of all dragons, Icicle said with a hiss, limping forward a step. You don't have the class to do what needs to be done. She touched her head, wiping away a trickle of blood. Sorry, I'm adjusting my mic real quick. She touched her head, wiping away a trickle of blood from one of her horns. And she's probably killed him by now anyway. What did Scarlet say? Winter asked. He spread his wings, blocking her path. When she find out Starflight and the others are still alive. I haven't spoken to her. Icicles weighed on a little on her feet. I can't. I don't want to see her. To admit I failed. Your fault. But what if she kills her in front of me? Or what if he's already dead? And she shows me his body. She took another staggering step, and Winter reached out to catch her, but she recoiled, snapping her teeth at him. But how have you... He started. She hasn't slept, Moon said wonderingly. Not since Jade Mountain. If I don't sleep, Icicle muttered triumphantly, then she can't get to me. She can't visit my dreams if I don't have any. Ha <laughs> ha! It's been days, King Kachi cried. You haven't slept in days. Don't you feel awful? I don't need to sleep, Icicle said. Whenever I get tired, I lay down beside the lava until the pain wakes me up. She spread her wings, and Winter saw with a shudder that she had blisters and small burns bubbling in spots across her scales. <sighs> this he could imagine too easily. His fearless, stubborn sister angrily burning herself, slashing pain across the body that betrayed her by daring to be tired. And he understood what she was going through, too. He'd lived with the guilt of losing Hailstorm for the last two years. Icicle, we need to know if she's killed him, he said. I'd wager a few camels that she hasn't, said Quibbly. He's more used to her as a bargaining chip than a co than as a corpse. And not very useful. Corpses, as a rule. Oh, Alright, shutting up now, he added, catching the look Moon was shooting him. Do you have any idea where she is? Winter asked Icicle. If if we can get to her and find him. If it were that easy.
See, I would have done it. Icicle snapped. I've considered all the options. Trust me. There's only one way to save him, and that's killing the Rainwing Queen. I'm not going to let you kill Queen Glory, King Kajio said stoutly. Icicle barked a ragged laugh. And how are you going to stop me, you preposterous pink dragon? Kinkaju lunged at Icy Hill, flying past Winter in red and orange in the red and orange blur before he realized what was happening. The little rainwing knocked Icy Hill over onto her back and wrapped her talons around Icy Hill's throat. Nobody threatens my queen! Kinkaju shouted. Hey! Winter shouted, Get off me! Wait. Hey! Winter shouted. Did I say that right? Did I actually say that? I, did I say another name? Well. Hey! Winter shouted. Get off me! Icicle ra raged. She swung her tail at King Kaja's wings but missed. Her vicious claws went up and serrated edges, the serrated edges glittering dangerously, ready for a killing blow at King Kaja's underbelly. Oh my. Sorry. I accidentally read ahead. King Kaju! Moon cried, jumping toward them. But before she could reach them, before Icicle could strike, before Winter could do anything, something small came whistling through the air and chunk and thunked into Icicle's neck. Icicle let out a gasp and jerked back. King Kaju jumped off of her with a yelp and looked up at the sky. Winter followed her gaze to the clouds and then watched as the grey melted and shifted like dragonettes bursting out of the snow into nine dragons in shades of red and gold and green. Icicle of the Ice Wings, Glor Queen Glory announced, you are under arrest for murder and attempted murder. No! Icicle roared, clawing at her neck. She rolled over and shoved herself upright, but her legs wobbled and her head was starting to droop. What have you done to me? What is happening? It's only a tranquilizer dart, said Deathbringer, winging down to land beside them. We find it makes transporting prisoners much simpler. You'll wake up just fine in a few hours. No! Icicle shrieked. I can't sleep! Don't make me sleep! She hurled herself at Winter, dug her claws into his shoulders, and shook him with all her fading strength. Winter, stop them! Help me! Tell them I can't! She'll find me! She'll tell me he's dead, and then it'll be over, and he'll be gone! Winter, keep me awake! It's too late, Deathbringer said, studying her with a puzzled expression. It's not that bad, the dark sleep. Icicle slowly collapsed forward onto Winter, her talons clenching open and close as if she was trying to claw herself back to waking. She'll come for me, Icicle whispered. So let her come, Winter said. He crouched as his sister's weight pressed him down, wringing his mouth close to her ear. Go, asleep. Go ahead and sleep, Icicle. You can't stay awake forever anyway. Talk to Scarlet and tell her she can get what she wants. She can still get what she wants. But she can't. Icicle's voice was barely a mumble now. It'll be prison. Winter glanced up at the faces around them. Nobody could hear what he and Icicle were whispering to each other. Not unless they could read minds. Well, this was one way to find out if the Skyfire really worked. He leaned closer to Icicle, close enough for the Skyfire pouch to touch her scales as well as his own. And then, as his sister's eyes closed, he whispered, Tell Scarlet if she can prove that Hailstorm is still alive. I'll kill Glory for myself, for her myself. 
end of chapter eight. Two chapters left of today. I'll check how many pages this next chapter is. Sixteen. Sixteen pages. Okay, I need to drink some water before we go into that. <laughs> Done. Hydrated. You better be hydrating too. I see you. A lurking. <laughs> Chapter 9. The healer's pavilion near the Rainwing village was large, quiet, and sunlit, with curtains of green vines shielding the interior from curious onlookers. And there were plenty of curious dragons. Once Winter could see, and once he could only hear, murmuring and twittering like a council of invisible birds in the trees. The rainforest was starting to give him the suffocating, spine-crawling feeling that he was always, that he was always being watched. Only rainwings were allowed to carry the unconscious prisoner. Glory ordered all the nightwings to stay away and sent Deathbringer to make sure none of them came looking for her. She also didn't object when Winter pushed his way into the pavilion and stood next to his sister, glowering about defiantly. I'm staying right here, he said. Understood, Glory said with a nod. She turned to survey the others as they edged through the curtain and stood back against the wall out of the way. Your Majesty, how did you find us? Moon asked hesitantly. Glory glanced at uh, Kinkaju. Her scales shifting to starbursts of royal purple against deep blue. Mm. I left her a trail to follow, King Kaju admitted, looking guilty. Sorry, Moon, but she's our queen. I wanted her there in case we really did find Icicle. Moon nodded thoughtfully, looking back at the sleeping Icewing. I guess it's lucky you did, she said. Winter wanted to disagree, but he remembered the desperate rage on Icicle's face. She had been seconds away from killing King Kaju. And even though King Kaju was just a rainwing, he had to admit, only to himself, that he didn't want her dead. Besides, whatever she has planned for my sister now, Queen Glory would have to be much less merciful if Icicle had killed her friend. It was lucky for Icicle too that Gloria had found them right away, right then. A pair of sky blue rain wings was moving quietly around our Icicle, cleaning her wounds. Another one, pale pink, stood by her head with a blowgun and darts in the, at the ready in case she woke up. Icicle's chest rose and fell in long peaceful moment, movements, and her face was as still as winter had ever seen it. The tortured expression was gone, for now. He hoped she could get a few hours of real rest before Scarlet came hunting through her dreams. It's odd, said one of the Rainwing healers. It's odd, one of the Rainwing healers murmured to the other. Look how much the scratch has bled, Bullfrog. She wasn't letting herself sleep, King Kaju told them. She hasn't slept in four or five days. The healers both made alarmed clicking noises with their tongues and bent over Icicle again, inspecting her more closely. Why would anyone do that to herself? said the one named Bullfrog. It's worse than refusing to eat. Another day of it and she'd probably be dead. 
At least she'll be able to heal now that she has to sleep. Going even 12 hours without sleep is one of my nightmares. Said the other. Remember that Raymond a few years ago who, wouldn't, who couldn't sleep? That was the saddest case I ever saw. Bullfrog, Bullfrog shook his head, and his tail turned a glum shade of grey. A Raymond who can't sleep? Glory Echo. Isn't that kind of like a ceiling who can't swim? It's worse than that, said the pink dragon. He couldn't change his scales at either. Because he couldn't sleep. Because he couldn't sleep, said Bullfrog. We figured out he had a snout deformity, deformity that kept him from sleeping for more than an hour at a time. But there was no way to fix it. It was awful. He was awful, said the pink dragon. Sometimes I would wake up from my sometime nap and he'd just be standing there staring at me. And he couldn't camouflage himself. And you could never tell what he was feeling by looking at his scales. Grr, said the other healer, shuddering from talons to tail. It's like he wasn't even a rain wing at all said Bullfrog. He was a lot grumpier than a real wearing wing too. So what color was he if he couldn't change? Quibbly asked curiously. Kind of an ordinary green lime all over, Bullfrog answered. He held out one talon and shifted the scales along his arm to demonstrate. Very boring. And unattractive, agreed the second healer. She gathered the damp leaves stained with icicles blood and bustled and bustled all off. That's our cautionary tale of what happens when you don't sleep, said the pink dragon. Ahem, your majesty. I do sleep, Glory protested. Maybe not as much as other rain wings, but I've been doing sunshine every day no matter how busy I am. So quit your s Oh so quit your stalling, Jambu. Oh it was Jambu Oh I'm just saying Jambu resettled his wings, looking pleased with himself. What are you planning to do with my sister? The winter asked Glory. I can take her back to the Ice Kingdom. I promise Queen Glacier will see that she's punished. punished. Glory circled Icicle's bed, studying the sleeping dragon. She's too dangerous, said the queen with a flick of her tail. She killed one of my subjects. On the way to killing you, King Kaju interrupted to point out. Glory waved this away with a talon. I can't just let her fly out of here, she said to Winter. I need to be a true queen to the Nightwings, and that means letting them see justice. And I also don't want to start a war with the Icewings, and I believe a queen should have a say in what happens to her subjects. So I'll send for Queen Glacier, and together we can decide what happens to Icicle. That was more fair than Winter could have hoped for, and yet, it made his stomach twist in a painful, anxious way to think of his queen coming here to judge him and his sister. The rankings, he thought, and what will mother and father think? I need to find Hailstorm before she arrives, he thought. If I can free him, Queen Glacier will understand why Icicle did what she did. In the meanwhile, Glory sighed. We'll have to que keep her tranquilized so she doesn't try to escape or hurt someone else. Wait, what? Winter rose to his feet and got his wings caught in a woven leaf hammock that was hanging from the ceiling. He wrestled it off with a growl of frustration. I need to talk to her. And I need a decent prison. Glory said, snapping her tail back and forth. 
the railings don't have anything. Where am I supposed to put misbehaving dragons? She turned to an older railing who was sitting in the corner, watching with stately composure. Has no railing in history ever required punishment? We don't imprison, we banish, said the older dragon with an elegant shrug. What could be worse than being thrown out of the rainforest? You see what I'm dealing with? Glory said to Winter. I have one prisoner right now, Nightwing. And we basically had to stick him in a quicksand pit. Every few hours, his guards haul him out just enough so he doesn't die. And then he starts sinking again. Yuck, said King Kaju. But he deserves it, actually. And there are two others I should deal with, but Queen Thorn has agreed to keep them in her sandwing prison instead, until I decide what to do with them. Glory Sloth poked its head from out, out from behind the Queen's shoulder and started climbing slowly up her neck. I'll figure out something else eventually, Glory said, but I'm guessing Queen Galatia wouldn't appreciate it if I stuck one of her dragons in quicksand, so I am afraid Icicle has to stay asleep for now. Uh, your majesty, said a peach and plum colored dragon, poking her head through the curtain. Deathbringer would like a word. Excuse me, Glory said to Winter with a small bow. The older dragon followed her out, leaving Jambu on guard and Bullfrog still gently cleaning Icicle's scales. Winter intercepted. Winter inspected Icicle's face with concern. A small furrow had appeared between her eyes. Was she speaking with Scarlet at that very moment? He watched her for a moment longer. For bleh. He watched her for a long minute, but, but she didn't move or speak or give any sign of what her dreams were about. Finally, he turned and stalked to the wall where Moon and Kinkaju were sitting together, their tails entwined. Quibbly was pacing around the healer's pavilion, Pope poking his nose through around the curtains to see the other patients, sniffling piles of medici medicinal leaves and scaring clouds of small yellow and scaring small and scaring clouds of small yellow butterflies out of the rafters. Now what am I supposed to do? Winter hissed at him. Your bright idea to come here, but I'm now closer to finding a hailstorm, and it's my fault my sister's been caught by a bunch of rainwings. We are closer to finding hailstorm, King Kachi objected. We found the only dragon who's spoken to Scarlet and knows the whole story. And she's fast asleep, Winter said, which does me any good how? Quibbly stopped next to Moon, brushing her wings with his. Winter's claws twitched and he clenched his jaws. He's jealous. He's very jealous. <clears throat> the other rainwings weren't paying any attention to them, but Quibbly lowered his voice anyway. Didn't you say you overheard Icicle and Scarlet conspiring? He asked Moon. Does that mean you can get into dreams too? A shock like lightning ran through Winter's veins. Is that true? He demanded. Can you listen in when Scarlet finds her? <coughs> oh, sorry. I will try, Moon said, leaning in, leaning a little closer to Kunkaju. I am trying. It's all darkness in Icicle's mind right now. She's too deep in sleep for dreams. Three moons, Winter realized. If Moon overhears the conversation, she'll know what I told Icicle. She'll probably have Glory arrest me too. I'll have to be ready to fly the moment she tells me what I need to know about Scarlet. So we wait, King Kaju said, for Scarlet to come. 
It seemed as if a long time passed, as the shadows slowly lengthened and the night came creeping into the pavilion. Winter arranged himself in the Icewind guarding stance, but after a while all his training failed and he fell asleep. Moon jolted him awake by touching one of his ta of one of her talons with his to his. She's here, she whispered. She's an icicle's mind. Shh. The pavilion was dimly lit by a few beams of moonlight and several jars hanging from the ceiling that appeared to be fill full of fireflies. Quibli and Kinkaju slept peacefully, curled next to each other on the floor. Winter blinked into the shadows and saw that Bullfrog was still on the pavilion, asleep in a hammock next to a snoring Rainwing patient. Jambu had been replaced by another Rainwing, who was watching Icicle, her blowgun at the ready. He stepped quietly over to Icicle's bed and saw that his sister was sleeping very differently now. All her muscles were tense, as if she wanted to run but couldn't, and her claws were twitching violently. Do you think she's about to wake up? The Rainwing God asked Winter. She's just had another dart an hour ago. She just had another dart an hour ago. So she shouldn't, but I've never seen anyone fight sleep like that. She looks like she's eaten some kind of toxic fern. I don't think she'll wake up, Winter answered. He meant it, but he was still surprised when the Rainwing nodded and sat back. Why would she trust the prisoner's brother to tell her the truth? Rain wings really had no sense at all. Winter, Moon whispered, his name in her voice like a spell that ran warmth through his bones. He hurried back over to her. I need paper, she said, grabbing one of his talons without opening her eyes. And something to write with, quickly. Winter searched all the corners of boxes, corners and boxes and niches. He even checked under all the beds. He ransacked the entire pavilion and couldn't find a single scroll. I'll be right back, he whispered to Moon, hurrying past her to the outer curtain. She just nodded, her brow wrinkled with pain. He paused for a second, watching her where she crouched in the moonlight. Did it hurt? Listening to other dragons' dreams? Or or was it particularly bad listening to Scarlet and Icicle? Sorry, I'm just checking how long we got left of this chapter. Seven. Okay. He pushed through the combined curtain and stared out at the very dark forest, the rainforest and the ice kingdom. It was rare to find this kind of darkness. The gift of light had been passed along to every inhabited part of the kingdom, and there were moon globes everywhere. His home also had so much open space, and the three moons always glittered on everything. The snow, the ice palace, the frozen lakes, the glaciers. He wished he had a moon globe. He wasn't used to flying into pitch black like this especially when he couldn't tell where any of the rain wings were. He could hear some of them snoring amid the nighttime rainforest cacophony, but he couldn't actually see any of other dragons, even in the spots where moonlight could reach. He thought a pale storm trapped in some kind of secret skywing prison, probably in complete darkness for the last two years. Wait! A voice called softly behind him. King Kaju pushed through a curtain and stood next to him. You stay here, she said. I'll get Moon some paper. I know where to go. The new Rainwing School is close by. I should come with you, he said. No thanks. King Kaju nudged him out of her way. You'd probably wake the whole village, thrashing and flailing around. Stay and make sure Moon is all right. She flashed away, vanishing quickly into the dark, and he had to admit, more or less soundlessly. He wondered if Rainwings had better night vision than other tribes. The tribes with fire would just use that when they needed to light up the dark, he guessed. What about Sea Wings? 
could they see in the dark? If he were still in, at school, he could probably get someone to let him test that theory by studying his fellow students. But I'm not still at school, and I'm not going back, and I shouldn't. I mean, I don't care what the other tribes can do anyway. He returned to Moon and found her in a curtained off corner of the pavilion, next to the only window with a view of the starry night sky. A small blue frog with darker blue speckles was sitting on one of her front talons, and they both seemed to be listening to, listening to the chorus of frogs and birds and insects and whatever other mysterious creatures were making all that noise outside. Winter paused beside his sister for a moment. Icicle looked as though she was slowly relaxing back into real sleep. Scarlet's gone, Moon said as Winter approached. Was it terrible? Winter asked. Is Icicle all right? What did Scarlet say about Hailstorm? Moon gave him an odd, searching look. Her teardrop scales caught the moonlight on one side and the firefly lamp on the other, gleaming as though one was ice and the other was gold. Winter realized this was the first time they'd been alone together, apart from the sleeping dragons around him, since he found out she could read minds. Or was it the first time they'd ever been alone together? He felt the weight of the Skyfire rock pouch ankle around his ankle. Scarlet says your brother is still alive. Moon turned her talon over, gently sliding the frog onto the windowsill. Icicle asked for proof, but Scarlet only laughed at her. I wish I could read Scarlet's mind, but she's too far away, and it's not really her in Icicle's dream, only a projection of her. So I can't tell what she's thinking or whether it's true about Hailstorm. I'm sorry. She gave him a quick, confused look again. Icicle offered her a deal. You don't have to, he started. I'm not, she said. Worried, I mean. I know you won't kill Queen Glory. Do you know that? He asked. How? Because I think she's the kind of dragon you respect, she said slowly. And I think think you wouldn't want to start a war between the Ice Wings and both of her tribes. I think you can imagine what killing her would do to Peria, and you know it would be bad. Also, you're her guest. She's welcomed and trusted you. You aren't the kind of dragon who betrays someone's trust. Winter studied her profile as she wound a vine between her claws. That's a lot of thoughts, he said. Weren't you paralyzingly shy at one point? What happened to that un unobtrusive quiet dragon? It turns out it's actually much easier to talk to you when I can't hear what you're thinking, Moon admitted, smiling. He stared into the dark he stared into her dark eyes for a long moment. But all of that about Queen Glory. Are you sure you're not still reading my mind? He finally asked, quietly. I don't have to, she said. I've already been in there. For one thing, I know you. And I've watched you. I saw you put out the fire in history, Kate. I saw you save me and Starlight from your own sister. I think you can think bigger than just one tribe against another. You can think about what's best for all the tribes. I guess I just... I trust you. You seem very sure of certain things about me, Winter said. That I would never hurt a dragon net. That I would never kill Queen Glory. That I am somehow honorable and brave. I am, said Moon. I am sure of all of those things. Even when everything else inside you is confusion and mirrors and pain, those things are true. He lifted the vine from her claws and wrapped it around his own talons, 
lowering his voice even more. Sometimes I'm only sure of one thing, he said. But I hope I never hurt you. She gazed up at him in surprise. Me? But I thought you hated me. Well, I'm not much of a mind reader, are you? He said with half a smile. I mean, I should, but for some reason I can't. He took another step closer, tilting his wings forward to brush hers. <laughs> he's finally admitting that he's in love. Well, good. Moon said, looking at their wings instead of his face. I'm, I'm glad you can't hate me. Got it! King Kaju's voice said eagerly behind them. Moon, where are you? Winter let out a breath he hadn't known he was holding. Here, Moon said. She touched one talon lightly to Winter's chest, then went past him and through the curtain. Winter pressed his talons together, trying to stop them from shaking, and then followed her. Sorry, I can't get the smile and excitement out of my voice right now. I'm sorry. Kinkaju was in the center of the pavilion, under one of the firefly jaw jars, spreading a blank scroll on the floor. She, she notched an ink pot toward Moon with her tail. What is this for? King Kaju asked. I saw something, Moon said, crouching beside her. She took a long thin reed that King Ka she took the long thin reed that King Kaju was holding and dipped it in the ink. Behind Scarlet, I got a glimpse of what was behind her. And um, I think it was a mountain. It, it was kind of an, an unusual shape. She started drawing. Maybe we can find it. Winter watched the lines appear under Moon's claws, swooping and turning back, crisscrossing and diving like flights of dragons in the sky. This was a real clue, a clue that might lead them to Hailstorm. It looked like a wall at first, tall and sheer, with silvery waterfalls trailing down, down it like dragons, like dragon tails. Along the top of the wall was a ridge of sharp, of sharp peaks that looked like an ice wing spine, leading up to one peak that looped up and back on itself, almost in the shape of an eye. Moon lifted the reed and studied the picture. Mm, that's close anyway, she said. Does it look too familiar to either of you? Winter shook his head. I haven't spent much time in the Sky Kingdom, though. He said, assuming that is the Sky Kingdom. I've never been anywhere but the Rainforest and Jade Mountain, King Kaju said with a helpless shrug. And the Nightwing Island, of course. Hey, quickly, wake up and look at this! The sandwing came instantly awake as King Kaju poked him, jumping to his feet as if he were ready for a battle. Moon held the sketch out to him and explained where she'd seen it. Quickly studied it for a moment, then shook his head. Never seen it, he said, but someone must have. Great work, Moon. Y yeah, thanks, Winter added hastily. I didn't really do anything she said, taking the drawing back. It's only, I mean, I'm just lucky, King Katya finished. I wish I had a cool power like that. Lucky? Moon said wonderingly. Above her head, three fireflies escaped their jaw and darted off in a flicker of surprised sparks. Well, it's no use asking any railing where this is. Kinkaji said, flicking her tail at the sketch. None of us leave the rainforest if we can help it, because it is awesome and perfect here, she added with a stern look at Winter. Let's try Deathbringer, Moon suggested. He's been, he's been all over the continent. Quibbly shot a sideways look at Winter. Is that all right? He asked. He's not exactly a favorite dragon. I'll survive. Winter said, if you can help me find Hailstorm, 
That's what matters. It was hard to focus on hating the night wings now that there was real hope in front of him. A chance of finding Hailstorm before Scarlet killed him. If he'd bought enough time with his lie about killing Glory for her. If he moved fast. If Moon had truly seen where Scarlet was. And if Hailstorm was there too. If, if, if. If I can make this happen, I might really see my brother again after all. That was end of chapter 9 and end of part 1 of the book. And now we move on to part 2 which is called And the Claws of the Cloud. Not cloud, clouds. And the Claws of the Clouds. Well first... Hydration. We gotta hydrate. Done. Done with the hydration. All right. I'm gonna check how many ch pages in this chapter again. <laughs> I'm just making sure it's not another twenty long, twenty pages long one. Alright. It's 14 pages. And we are... Okay, we're halfway through the book already. We're halfway through the book. There. It was getting a bit loud, the rain noises. <laughs> Alright. Chapter 10. Deathbringer didn't recognize the mountains Moon had drawn, but he knew who might. The talents of peace, he said. He breathed out another small flame to study the drawing. Find them, or what's left of them, and ask one of their skywings to help you. They'd found him on guard outside the royal treehouse where Glory slept. The darkness was not as thick up here, close to the treetops, where more moonlight could filter through the leaves. The small glowing lights of phosphorescent insects trailed up and down the branches, and Winter spotted a few eerie glow-in-the-dark moths nestled in the pale night orchids. In the pale night orchids. All right then," said Quickly. "We'll go ahead and track down a shadowy underground group who move every few weeks and weren't caught for the entire war. Easy." Deathbringer swatted at him and quickly jumped up and ju and quickly jumped out of the way with a grin. They're not all that shadowy now, Deathbringer said. And an old and nobody said you were coming, Winter said to Quipley. I don't know what this wee business is all about. Ignore him, Quipley said to Deathbringer. We're growing on him, I'm pretty sure. Why does the Talents of Peace even still exist now that the war is over? Well, many of them aren't welcome back in their tribes, so they have nowhere else to go, Deathbringer said. The goals are shifting, though. I know the dragon who's taken over the group. I can help you find them if Glory doesn't mind you leaving. Oh, how nice of you to check, Glory said, materializing suddenly out of the darkness. Winter jumped, wondering how long the Rainwing Queen had been there, and why she was camouflaged. Because she was following him, or because she was spying on Deathbringer? As it happens, Queen Glory went on, I don't mind what Quibbly and Queens Winter choose to do. I'm not their queen, but I do have a few reservations about allowing two of my favorite subjects to gallivant around the continent chasing Pyrrha's most dangerous dragon. <gasps> Did you hear that? King Kaju said, nudging Moon so vigorously she nearly knocked her out. Favor oh, 
knocked her over. Favorite! Um, the part you were supposed to hear is dangerous. Glory said. With Blister and Burn both dead, Scarlet is probably the scariest dragon left alive. And she certainly hates us the most. Explain to me how it is a good idea to send a quartet of young dragonets after her. No quartet necessary, Winter said. Just the one. That's me. Icewing Prince over here, going to save my brother without the entourage. Please order them to stay here. It will make me it will make my life a lot simpler. We're not going after Scarlet, Moon said to Glory. We're going to find Winter's brother. We are doing no such thing, Winter said firmly. I am going to find him. Just me. That's right, Quigley said. Just him and the three of us, his best friends in the world. I can't even dignify that with a snort, Winter said, looking down his nose at the sandwing. If we can figure out where she's got him locked up, maybe we can set Hail Storm free without Scarlet even seeing us, Moon said. Besides, Kinkaji said, we're not that much younger than you and your friends were when you set out to save Furia from all the bad dragons. We'll be careful, Moon said. We promise. Don't listen to them, Winter said. I don't want them to come with me. In fact, if you could stick this sandwing in some quicksand while I get away from him, I will personally bring your walrus to express my gratitude. Eww, said Kinkaju. It's very best friends. Quickly said sincerely. In the moonlight, it was hard to tell, tell what the colors were that were shifting across Glory's scales. She curled her tail around the branch underneath her and sighed deeply. Deathbringer. I think you should let them go, Deathbringer said. I went on my first mission when I was four, and I turned out fine. Well, that's debatable, Glory said. And if I wanted to go you'd have an absolute heart attack. Yes, because you're the most important Queen Imperia, said Deathbringer, and also because I couldn't live without you. Not that you care, torturing me with your recklessness all the time. <sighs> That's true, Glory said. You'd be an absolute mess the way you were before you met me. I was only half a dragon before I met you, he declared. And I would be even less if I lost you now. Alright, settle down, she said affectionately. She turned to Kinkaju and Moon. You may go, but here are my orders. Do not interact with Scarlet. Stay as far out of her way as you can. Don't let her know you're there. Don't fight with anyone. Don't make any queens mad. And most importantly, don't you dare die. Understood? The two dragons nodded, and King Kaju clapped her front talons together with excitement. Am I speaking a language only ice wings understand? Winter demanded. Listen, Glory said, fixing her green-eyed gaze on Winter. I used to think I could do everything by myself, too. I didn't want help from anyone. But I couldn't, but I wouldn't be here now if it weren't for my friends. And I have a feeling you'll be saying the same, the same thing a year from now. That might apply if these dragons were my friends, Winter objected, but they're actually strangers who happen to get thrown into a group with me. They're not even ice wings. Why should they care to follow? Why should they care what happens to Hailstorm? And they care what happens to you, Glory said. For some reason, added Deathbringer. Entertainment value offered quickly. <laughs> Oh, Quibbly, I love you. So, Glory said, shooting a quelling look at the sandwing. I strongly suggest you stop fighting and take them along. You might be surprised to find how useful dragons from other tribes can be. Winter growled softly. He didn't want to give in. He wanted to prove to his family that he could save Hailstorm alone. And he 
and he really didn't want to admit how much he would rather have these dragons with him when he faced Scarlet. Moon's mind reading, King Kaiju's camouflage, and Quibbler's aggravating intelligence. Yes, he could imagine how they'd all be useful. What was wrong with him? Where was his Icewing pride? But it would waste time if he tried to keep arguing. And saying yes meant a few more days with Moon. Which should have been the reason to say no. Very well, he said finally. Tell me how to find the Talents of Peace. The winding tail river began high in the claws of the cloud mountains and ran down past Jade Mountain to the sea. Near a bend in the river, north of the rainforest and west of Queen Mohin's lake, there was a scavenger den that was believed to be the biggest in Peria. Unlike most scavenger dens, this one was not hidden away. Instead, it was well fortified with stone walls and defended fiercely by the little creatures who lived in it. I know some dragons who've hunted there, Deathbringer had said, but most of them say it's not worth it. You'll just end up getting jabbed with sharp things and pelted with heavy things. They're much easier prey on the river and mountains. This was a new spot to This was a new spot the Talents of Peace had chosen for their signals, apparently, now that Jade Mountain was being watched by too many dragon eyes. The scavenger den was fairly high up, built on a cliff overlooking the forest, and any dragon flying over it would be visible for miles in every direction. Which wasn't Winter's favorite feeling, to be honest, but that was how it worked. The Talents of Peace were out there somewhere, with someone watching the skies in case of a signal like this, and he needed to find them. The four dragon nets reached the area shortly after midday, landing on one of the cliff tops below the scavenger den. A brisk wind buffeted, buffeted their wings and tossed hawks around far overhead with piercing hunting cries. The sun was brilliant yellow-white in a perfectly clear sky, much like the day Hailstorm had been captured. We could wait all night, Moon suggested. We could wait until night, suggest Moon suggested. Then Quibbly and I can fly up and signal with fire. Trails of flames in the night sky. That's where I said that would work. They're not just watching for fire-breathing dragons, though, Winter said. I can take care of this part, don't worry. He flung himself into the air before anyone could argue with him. The wind caught his wings and lifted him in a wheeling spiral up and up and up toward the blue dome overhead. It was such a relief to be out of the rainforest and away from all the clinging damp vines and weird ripe fruit smells. Winter felt as though his wings were six times larger out here, with room to stretch and soar. He flew as high as he could, circled over the other dragonets, and then plummeted swiftly down like a meteor slicing through the sky. He zoomed over their heads, banked upward, and caught a wind where he could float like a leaf. Now for the signal. Winter angled his wings to catch the sun. He'd swung in the river and polished his scales this morning, so they glittered even more than usual, wintry blue and white. The sunlight cut reflected off him as he tilted his wings, flashing like a mirror to any watching dragons below. He twisted slowly, making sure he could be seen from any direction, although he guessed the Talents of Peace was somewhere in the long range of mountains that split the land like jagged claws pushed, pushing off, bleh, pushing out of the ground. He could see the twin peaks of Jade Mountain far away to the south. To the west, a pale rolling dune, the pale rolling dunes. Yeah, rolling, not rolling. Rolling dunes of the desert filled the horizon beyond the mountain range. And below him, to the east and north, were the swamps of the Mud Kingdom. Was Hailstorm out there somewhere? Did he know the war was over? Did he know how Scarlet was using him now? 
Was he crouched in darkness, wishing someone could would come save him? Winter shook those thoughts away, turning his attention to the scavenger den. It was clearly chosen. It was cleverly chosen. The scavengers had found a spot where a huge overhanging ledge sheltered much of their home from the sky, shielding them in one direction from flying predators. Cave entrances dotted the cliffside, and odd little structures were, cave were carved out of the rock, each probably large enough for nine or ten scavengers to curl up inside. A wall of thick stones hang ran around the den, ending at the cliff on each side, barricading them in. You could also see several patches of greenery that looked almost like gardens. Could scavengers think far enough ahead to plant gardens? Next to the ledge, a waterfall cascaded cheerfully down the cliff, right past the den. Some kind of wooden contraptions was built into the spray was built out into the spray, catching buckets full of water and spinning them back toward the safety of the walls. Winter hovered, watching the scavengers. Several of them were darting about, calling to each other in their squeaky chirps. They seemed very active, much more so than bandit, almost like a pot of dolphins flurrying about after you accidentally drop the remains of your whale carcass on them. A few were peering out of the wall. A few were peering over the wall at the nearby cliffs. He saw one point to the ledge where Moon, Quigley, and Kankachi were sitting in the sun together, resting their wings, black and pale yellow and iridescent purple blue green, side by side. Are they worried about dragons so close to their home? Winter wondered. That was cute. Of course, this particular group of dragons was possibly the least likely to eat the scavenger in all of any dragons in Kyria. But if they'd wanted to, what would the scavengers do about it? The scavengers were rolling something up to the wall now. Something made of pieces of wood fitted together, with ropes and metal bits as well. The sharp pointed end of it slid into the slot, slid into a slot in the wall and poked out the other side. The winter swoop lower, trying to figure out what they were doing. It didn't seem as if they'd noticed him yet in the sky above. A scavenger with long fur swooping off its head, like a tail climbed nimbly onto the side onto the wall and leaned over, holding a torch that flickered with fire at the end. It lowered the torch to the end. It lowered the torch to touch the end of the contraption that was sticking through the wall. The flames caught and licked around the point, and immediately the scavengers on the other side of the wall started bustling around, twisting the ropes and pulling things and pointing the device at the dragons below. It was a weapon! Those scavengers had some kind of fiery projectile weapon, and they were about to shoot it at Moon and the others. Winter folded his wings and plummeted toward the den as fast as gravity could take him. There was a shout from one of the scavengers. Suddenly the weapon fired, and a spear as long as a dragon came hurtling out of the wall, dancing with flames and wickedly sharp. It plunged down straight toward Quibley's heart. Look out! Winter roared. He wasn't close enough to reach it, but... He called up the cold from inside him and splashed the spray of frost breath at the spear. The fire went out instantly as ice crystals appeared all along the weapon. The extra weight and its force and the force of his breath knocked the spear off course. Off course, it crashed into the cliff underneath Quibley's talons and then dropped to the earth far below him instead. King Catcher shrieked and Quibley leaped aside spreading his wings to shield Moon. Winter wheeled over their heads and landed beside them. Time to move, he barked. The scavengers are shooting at us, King Kaju said. That's so mean. We didn't even try to eat them or anything. What all the dragons have, Quigley pointed out. The four of them swiftly arrowed into the sky, far out of range of the scavengers' weapons. Winter glanced back and saw a small fur and saw the small furry faces peering out to watch them fly away. 
Is it weird that I'm kind of impressed? Moon asked. I had no idea they could come up with something like that. I'm sticking with outraged, King Kaju said. Hello, I'm a vegetarian, so there's there is so no need to shoot me of all dragons. I can go down there and roar at them. Her scales were vibrantly, alarmingly orange, much brighter than any Skywing scales could be. Winter guessed that if the Talons had somehow missed his mirror signal, a dragon this weirdly colored might still catch their eye. What in the world is it? Quigley asked. He saw it in a tight circle, trying to see down into the den. How did it work? How did they make it? Could we make one? I mean, not us. Not right now, but maybe one day for Thorn's palace? I've never seen anything quite like it, Winter admitted. Can you draw it for me? Can you draw it for me? Quigley asked. Um, sure. They found a place to wait for the talents above the scavengers, out of their sight this time, near the river that led to the waterfall. King Kaju and Noon went off to find food, while Winter tried to sketch the weapon in the sandy barks in the sandy banks beside the river. But did this pull it back? Quibbly kept asking. He poked the drawing, scattering sand over Winter's claws. Did this part fit into here? Wouldn't they need a piece like this? I have no idea! Winter finally erupted. I was a little busy saving your scales! Not true, Quibbly said, sitting back and giving him a delighted smile. You totally saved my scales. I knew we were best friends. Should I say thank you yet? No, Winter grumbled. Thank you. Quibbly said, entirely too sincerely for Winter. Well, Winter said, I would have done the same thing for anyone, you know. I know, Quibbly said, I like that about you. Winter saw with surprise that he meant it. Quibbly was as bad as a rain wing, flabbing his feelings all over the place all the time. You would get eaten alive in the Ice Kingdom, Winter pointed out. Quibbly shrugged. Maybe not. I do like the scorpion den, he said. Ah, my family. They would not have saved me in this situation, if you're curious. More likely, they would have grabbed the spear and stabbed me themselves. Mine would have waited to see if I could save myself, and then stood there shaking their heads in grave disappointment when I didn't. Winter said, taking notes on all the things I did wrong. Stood in the wrong place, allowed spear to penetrate scales, bleeding too much, and so forth. Quibbly laughed. They sound great. They are, Winter said quickly. That's how Icewing parents are supposed to be. I'm very lucky. I'm, I'm very lucky. Quibbly gave him a strange look. Aww. I guess they did something right, he said after a moment. I mean, for you to be so determined to rescue your brother. If I were in a Skywing prison, my brother would definitely not come rescue me. To be fair, I wouldn't go rescue him either. Pyrrhia would be much better off with him locked up where he can't hurt anyone. A breeze sent ripples across the surface of the river. Winter stepped over his sketch and waded, and wa waded into the water, rinsing the sand off his claws. Tiny golden and silver fish darted around his talons. The water was bracingly cold, like a fleeting reminder of home. I have a sinister sister too, Quibbly offered. Icicle is not older than me, Winter said. We were in the same hatching. And Sinister is a bit of an exaggeration. Mm-hmm, Quigley said skeptically. Winter sighed. My parents will probably be proud of her, up until the part where she failed, which they'll see as my fault, and um, then got caught by rain wings, also my fault. Going home is going to be excellent all the way, so I can't wait. It'll be alright, because you'll be bringing Hailstorm with you, Quibbly said confidently. 
So they'll have to forgive you. Will they? Winter wondered. Would they be proud of him if he succeeded? Or would they be too horrified by his methods and his company? His sharp ears caught a quiet splash nearby. Alertly, he spun in a circle and scanned the river. Suddenly, he spotted a dark shape swim. Bleh. Suddenly, he spotted dark shape swarming through the water toward him, moving faster than a shark. Before he could cry out, a dragon lunged out of the water and straight for his throat. And of chapter 10. That was the last chapter of today, people. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I accidentally read ahead. I do that. But just the first page of the next um, chapter. Which we will take tomorrow. We will take the next five ow, chapters tomorrow. My desk is a mess and so is my knee. <laughs> um, but yeah. I hope you enjoyed listening to me read. Taking a different approach with reading as well. Like more, I don't know, narratively, I guess you could call it. I don't know. <laughs> um... But yeah, I hope you enjoyed today, and we'll come back tomorrow. I know it's not the most exciting thing to have on a stream, especially when there's no face cam. But you know, I do it because I like it. I enjoy it. And if you find it enjoying as well, then, well, we have something in common. <laughs> um, but yeah. I hope to um, see you guys tomorrow. I hope I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll go down. The bread mom was baking today is finally done. So I'm going downstairs and getting a piece of bread. I have not eaten all day and it is 9 p.m. I've not eaten in over 24 hours. I should really go downstairs to eat. Like right now. <laughs> but yeah. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to hydrate. Do not hydrate or else I will come for you. Um, remember to treat others the way you want them to treat you. Just be kind of it all. You know? The golden rule. <laughs> um, yeah. And I'll, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah! Go and stream now, because I am awkward. <laughs> I'm a very awkward person. <laughs> <laughs>